if more students are not joining shall we start now fine good morning everyone i am dr riddhi bhat today's practical on liquid for oral use will be taken by me it was planned to be taken by dr ankit but because of health issues i will be taking this practical for you and i am thankful to him for sharing this presentation before starting the practical i would like to know if your basic concepts regarding this are clear i would be wanting your active participation to make this class interesting so i would like to know what is drug in simpler words not the exact book definition i would just like to know what is drug in simpler words you can write in the chat box of course you all would be thinking this is like hammering to you in each and every theory and practical classes you are asked about same definitions and same terms but trust me even your seniors forgot these during their practicals exams so just to revise what is drug in simpler words anyone chemical with known structure that alters pathophysiology okay anyone else is it only used to treat a condition substance which alters pathophysiology for therapeutic gain okay so is it only used for treatment or other purpose too yes also for diagnosis prevent treat or diagnose okay fine for your simpler terms it is to treat okay or prevent or diagnose okay the next one is what is root root of drug administration what is that i am not asking for a, the exact definition of root of administration yes a place from where it is given so it is the site or in simpler words we can remember from where the drug is given is root examples would be enteral parenteral topical oral root rectal root some drugs which are applied on skin topical ones that way a root means from where the drug is given next is dose what is a dose amount of drug introduced exactly so from where the drug is introduced is a root the amount to be introduced is dose usually in milligrams or milliliters depending on the dosage form next one is dosing regimen is it same or different from dose what is a dosing regimen have you heard of that how often a dose is given so is it the frequency of dose yes uh not exactly it is the manner in which the drug is administered 
so a complete dosage schedule or regimen is the manner in which the drug is introduced for example if i say tablet paracetamol 500 mg here the 500 mg would be the dose but 500 mg three times a day after meals for five days so this is the correct regimen for any drug to be introduced okay the next one is dosage form what is that this is the simplest one come on fast it is the form in which the drug is introduced like syrup capsule tablet etc okay fine so root is from where the drug is introduced doses how much amount in which the drug is introduced regimen is a complete manner and dosage form is the form physical form of drug in which the drug is introduced fine here there is a statement on screen saying tablet paracetamol 500 mg orally three times a day for five days here you will have to answer what is drug in this statement quickly we are still in the revision portion okay paracetamol is the drug which is generic or brand so it's a generic drug generic name of a drug what is the dosage form here tablet fine dose of the drug it would be 500 mg not only 500 root of administration oral okay and a complete dosing regimen not just 5 days it is the duration of treatment 3 times a day is frequency of giving the complete manner that is 500 mg orally 3 times a day the complete dosing regimen you need to understand just the simpler words only here okay the statement written on the screen is it complete or the doctor shall write something else he or she should write something else more detailed or is it just enough have you been prescribed like this before or the doctor writes more details yes before or after meals when to take yes morning or night okay good the other details regarding how to write a prescription will be taken in separate practicals later on good so today's practical is about liquids and in clinical pharmacy you will see liquids at many places liquids can be for internal use and for external use as shown here for external use means the liquids which are used on skin for topical uses like lotions liniments etc you will learn in topical practical here we will be talking about liquids for internal use but for internal use also it can be for enteral or parenteral use for parenteral 
parenteral use means beyond intestinal use the drug which is not entering gastrointestinal system and directly going into the blood is parenteral you already know it so for parenteral use we give injections that injections can be liquids so those liquids are also for parenteral use but today we are not talking about that that will be covered in parenteral practical we will be talking about enteral use liquids again here it can be for oral use or for rectal use but today we will only be talking about liquids for oral use can anyone name any liquid which is used rectally have you heard of any liquid given rectally Okay, I'll give one hint. It is given for the passage of stool. Anything heard before? No. Okay, that is enema. I'm talking about enema given rectally. Fine. that is not being covered in today's practical thing about liquids for oral use coming to learning objectives these are the competencies listed which should be fulfilled at the end of this practical so when you joined mbbs there would be two main competencies first would be from your side that would be to gain the knowledge you attend any or every practical or theory class firstly to gain knowledge that is to treat patients to be a good doctor or give answers to your relatives or to show off to your engineering friends and the second competency would be to pass the exams mostly in exams we ask more important topics only which is useful for you to practice as a better doctor only but still there are some things to be remembered for only exams talking about exams this practical in exams can be asked via two ways in your practical it can be asked in spotting you all are very familiar with spotting so in that spotting you can be asked from any of the clinical pharmacy chapters including this one and second one is this practical can be asked in ospi 2 ospi's objective structured practical examination we have two ospi's one is performing injections which will be taught when you come physically over here and the second one is tray viva this practical can be asked as your test of communication skills in tray viva for spotting you can be given any of the dosage form and can be asked regarding anything about that dosage form including advantages disadvantages identification giving examples of that dosage form and in tray viva you will be asked to communicate of course viva will uh, will be followed by that but communication is main in that tray viva we can take one example you have you have been taught about solid dosage forms in previous practical so giving an example of spotting there can be given a question or a photo of a sublingual tablet and you can be asked to write specific instructions about that sublingual tablet i would like to know the answer in the chat box regarding specific instructions to be given to a patient while giving a sublingual nitroglycerin for myocardial infarction so in exams you are giving your spotting exam and you are asked to write about specific instructions to the patient for sublingual nitroglycerin tablet for myocardial infarction 
ओके वन इज स्कीप इट बिलो टंग एंड डू नॉट आफ्टर डिजायरेबल इफेक्ट ओके दैट इज आफ्टर रिजोल्यूशन ऑफ सिम्टम्स ओके गुड these are the specific instructions for two marks two marks you can also write about the position of the patient that is to be taken in upright posture that is sitting or standing these are general instructions for any of the oral dosage form not specific to sublingual tablet but you can also write at the end okay good so if one drug to is to be asked for communication to the patient in tray viva you shall communicate in local language or just as the examiner wants suppose i am the examiner and i ask you to explain me in local language assuming i am the patient about the use of lozenges what would it be okay so now we are talking about osp2 that is tray viva if i was the examiner i would ask you hu tamari patient chu ane hu avine em kau chu ke saheb mane cough thayo che ena mate aa lozenges kevi rite levani e samjhavsho okay who so ever wants to answer can write in the chat box and then unmute himself or herself to answer anyone Take three hundred milligram per day three times orally. I'm not asking about the dosage or dosing schedule per se. I'm just asking about how to take a lozenges. Just the specific instructions for the patient. Many of your examiners like the. communicate so i was expecting the answer to be aa goli tamare modha ma muki ne levani chhe chusvani chhe chavi nathi javani aur gali nathi javani pani sathe levani nathi yes the exact words in gujarati or hindi or the local language at that area if your examiner wants it to be in a local language if he or she asks in english you can answer in that english also okay fine so this practical can be asked in two ways first this in spotting and section by learning object or the competencies mentioned here are to be full end of this practical first you are able to enumerate identify drug formulation and the drug delivery systems so here one more term is here which was not covered in basics that is drug formulation so quickly what is the formulation can any one of you write about a formulation what what is it something you one of you recall the recipe of drug preparation okay so that is the list of ingredients present in the drug or a recipe in which it includes active formulation and inactive ingredients like excipients coloring agent flavoring agent vehicle etc which all are 
used for a drug for a drug compounding okay and newer and different drug delivery systems are also covered in your theory classes second objective is that you all should be able to describe various routes of drug administration the examples are, are also given here that is oral and sublingual here we'll be covering oral you all should be able to demonstrate understanding of the use of various dosage forms that is how to use these dosage forms next one is communicate effectively with a patient on the proper use of prescribed medication and this will be tested in your treviva next one is communicate with the patient regarding optimal use of medicine storage of medicine particularly practical storage and disposal has already been covered previously and newer devices are not for this practice okay so what can you see in this photo tablet and syrup okay both of these drugs are used via which route route of administration for tablet and syrup okay oral okay good so quickly write two to three advantages of oral route i am talking about a route not any individual preparation over here root oral root advantages passes through first pass effect is it the advantage non invasive cell self administration assistance is not required convenient okay good so it is safe convenient does not need any medical assistance i would say non invasive and painless and need not be sterile no need to make antiseptic conditions yes okay the disadvantages if oral route is having so many advantages so why would we go destroy by gastric juice bioavailability less slow action slow onset okay so onset of action is delayed or slower onset so in emergency conditions we cannot use this some drugs may be unpalatable not convenient or non uh, cooperative unconscious or vomiting patients may or cannot use this drugs and some drugs may be destroyed by gastric juice here you can see solid and liquid both the dosage preparations that is both dosage forms of oral route of administrations and we have discussed about advantages and disadvantages of oral route but what are the advantages of liquid dosage forms over solid dosage forms these are mentioned here liquids act quickly compared to solids because here the disintegration portion of tablets or capsules the absorption starts as soon as the drug reaches stomach or intestine the drug is more palatable because sweetening agent may have been may also be added in the liquid dosage form so it is more suitable for children certain drugs can only be given in the liquid form that is liquid paraffin so it can be given via liquid dosage form only because it is available in liquid form at room temperature 
certain drugs cause gastric irritation and in extent that it can cause ulceration or bleeding of stomach uh, mucosa so it should be given in liquid form some drugs which are useful only in diffusible form that is magnesium sulfate in the form of suspension so it is given by liquid uh, dosage form the last one is some patients doubt the efficacy of treatment unless it includes something in the bottle example written over here is placebo effect placebo before what is it have you heard of the term placebo meaning false uh, not exactly is it been covered in your theory classes yet or not can any of these 92 participants recall regarding your theory classes and tell me is it covered or not yes no medical effect but psychological effect yes okay so is it, it is covered but you cannot completely recall so uh, placebo is a latin term which says i may please you or i will please you so in that the drug is not given but an inert substance is given to the patient and because of the psychological effect positive psychological effect the patient feels better that is to satisfy the patient psychologically yes somewhat like that so positive psychology gives the effect not the drug itself that is placebo you would have heard ke a doctor to khali pani na injection apine j badhu matadi de che aur a doctor pase jawa thi emne maj badhu saru thai gaye che so that positive psychological effect achieved via inert substance that is the placebo the opposite of placebo is nocebo that is negative psychological effect here the term return is placebo effect which means that is any effect attributable to the patient's participant participation in the therapeutic encounter not due to any specific pharmacodynamic property of the substance that is not because of the drug but the effect is achieved because of patient's psychology the sentence written over here is some patients doubt the efficacy of treatment unless which uh, includes the bottle so if an elderly lady comes to you for the complaint of cough and you offer her lozenges she would refuse it she would just want her bottle of cough syrup to treat her જ્યાં સુધી એમને એમની કફ ની બાટલી ના મળે ત્યાં સુધી એમને મટે નહીં દેટ ઇઝ પ્લેસીબો ઇફેક્ટ ધ લોઝેન્જિસ વુડ હેવ ડન ધ સેમ વર્ક ફોર હર બટ હર સાયકોલોજી વોન્ટ્સ દેટ ટુ બી ઇન ધ બોટલ ઓનલી સો વિચ ઇઝ અચીવ બાય લિક્વિડ ડોઝેજ ફોર્મ્સ ઓકે કમિંગ ટુ ડિસેડવાન્ટેજીસ ઓફ લિક્વિડ ડોઝેજ ફોર્મ ઇટ ઇઝ લેસ સ્ટેબલ કમ્પેર્ડ ટુ સોલિડ્સ these are over solid dosage forms disadvantages of liquids over solid and you all know the advantages and disadvantages are like disadvantages of liquids are advantages of solids and disadvantages of solids are advantages of liquids talking about disadvantages it is less stable it gets easily contaminated by microorganisms it requires special storage conditions inconvenient to carry as they require a container and accuracy of dosing is also less than solids 
how much is a table one tablespoon is equal to how many milliliters quickly Twenty ml, thirteen to twenty, fifteen, five. <laughs> okay, so we don't care any that the banana house ni chamchi alag alag size ni hoy. But here you are confused about the actual conversion <laughs> only. Read. liquid dosage forms are prepared by either dissolving the active ingredients in aqueous or non aqueous solvents or suspending the drug in appropriate medium or incorporating the drug in oil or water phases and these liquids are used internally or externally we will be talking about internal liquids here and oral liquids are preferred in children elderly and patients with swallowing difficulties now what are vehicles these are the liquid bases that carry drugs and other excipients in dissolved or, or dispersed states the types of vehicles are aqueous or oily vehicles aqueous are water hydro alcoholic or polyhydric alcohols oily vehicles are vegetable oils mineral oils organic oily bases or emulsified bases in any of such vehicle the active ingredient is dissolved or dispersed and the drug is formed coming to classification of liquids so remember your chemistry classes and answer quickly the difference between a solution and mixture okay first answer what is a solution no one okay what is a mixture or difference or anything or something you can recall from your chemistry classes okay so a solution is a okay here is the answer solute is completely mixable in solvent solute solvent can be separated is solution okay good homogeneous and heterogeneous solution solute plus solvent is solution <laughs> solute plus solvent is solution so a solution is a homogeneous mixture in which solute and solvent are dissolved to make a newer compound and they cannot be separated further whereas a mixture is not completely dissolved the compounds are just mixed it can be homogeneous or heterogeneous but the chemical properties of each and every substance is retained but if the solvent is water it is known as aqueous that is liquid preparation We classify the liquid dosage forms into solution and mixtures. Solutions include syrup and elixir, and mixtures include emulsion and suspension. One more term is written over here that is drops for oral use. Any of these four, given as given from dropper as drops. are known as drops for oral use these are liquids only given via dropper to 
younger children so they are known as drops for oral use starting with solution solution is a clear liquid preparation that contains one or more soluble chemical substances dissolved in a solvent it is meant for internal or external use and it is chemically and physically homogeneous liquid as we have already seen the solutions include syrup and elixir so a syrup is a liquid oral preparation in which the vehicle is concentrated aqueous solution of sucrose or other sugar and alcohol is used as preservative as it is a sweetened syrup it is preferably used in pediatric practice the examples of syrup are paracetamol syrup vitamin syrups and cough syrups here you can see the syrup that is paracetamol pediatric syrup ip what is ip indian pharmacopeia okay good these abbreviations are also asked in your spotting exams when we ask bp in pharmacology many of the students write blood pressure but for pharmac it is british pharmacopeia pharmacopeia here it is written each 5 ml contains paracetamol that is a drug flavor and color of that drug other examples are levocetirizine syrup and vitamin syrup advantages of syrup are it masks bad taste of drugs especially suitable for children and quicker effect than tablet which requires previous disintegration it is a general advantage of any liquid preparation the disadvantages are stability cannot be ensured and it is costlier than tablets here comes the specific instructions given to the patient for use of this dosage form that is take the prescribed amount of syrup orally in upright posture either standing or sitting and close the bottle properly after taking the drug here comes the second dosage form that is elixir in case of any of the clinical pharmacy practicals you must learn the next or upcoming dosage form in terms of how is it different from the previous one whenever you read you try to recall or remember the differentiating features of each and every dosage form this makes learning easier so elixir is also a solution a clear liquid and it is a pleasantly flavored sweetened hydroalcoholic liquid intended for oral use hydroalcoholic meaning water plus ethanol here also the preservatives are added which are glycerin sorbitol propylene glycol flavoring agents and preservatives etc syrups are often incorporated in the preparation the examples of elixir are bromhexin and promethazine elixir you will learn in detail about these drugs in your further theory classes here you can see the pictures of these dosage forms for example this right one rexom image is asked in your spotting and the question written is write the advantages and disadvantages of this dosage form so what will you write you will write about elixir always read the question carefully 
and understand what is asked. You are asked about the dosage form. The dosage form here is elixir. So you are supposed to write about elixir. So to answer that question, the advantages of elixir are it is potent or nauseous drugs are pleasantly flavored and usually attractively colored. So patient compliance is better in this. Disadvantages are stability again cannot not be instructions are similar. That is, take the prescribed amount of elixir orally in upright posture, either sitting or standing, and close the bottle properly after using it. You can also write keep it out of reach of children. You are taught in storage and disposal class regarding the storage of dosage forms. That is, fridge ni upper rakhanu ke TV ni niche tamare nakhi karvanu. The second part in this liquid dosage form classification is mixtures. So a mixture is a liquid preparation containing one or more soluble or insoluble ingredient which do not chemically react with each other. So the chemical properties of each ingredient is retained. And mixtures are emulsion or suspension. Both are mixtures. Starting with emulsion, it is a liquid medicament containing two immixable liquids, one of which is broken into minute globules and each globule being surrounded by a thin film of emulsifying agent and then dispersed throughout the other liquid. So it is liquid plus liquid. Examples are oil in water emulsion or water in oil emulsion. The natural oil in water emulsion is milk. And water in emulsion is butter. Most orally administrable emulsions are oil in water type. And most common example is liquid paraffin emulsion. Here two liquids cannot be mixed in each other and minute globules are present. And it is liquid plus liquid. Emulsifying agent gets concentrated in between the two liquids and reduces the interfacial tension between oil and water. Thus, they provide homogeneity to the preparation and envelop the globules to prevent the coalescence. They have a polar part and non-polar part. So, in your chemistry, you are already taught about this. That polar part is hydrophilic, a water-soluble part, and non-polar one is hydrophobic, that is lipid-soluble part. So hydrophilic portion will go towards the water and hydrophobic away from the water. This is just for your understanding, <laughs> will not be asked in your exams. So oil in water emulsion has an aqueous solution. Outer one is the water part. So hydrophilic head will go towards the water part and hydrophobic tail will be centered away from the water and in water in oil emulsion the water droplet is here in the center surrounded by a hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail is away from water so here these are the example of liquid paraffin emulsion advantages of which are it masks unpleasant taste and smell of a drug. It facilitates administration of substances that are immiscible in water, protects a drug susceptible to oxidation or hydrolysis, and oily drugs in finely dispersed state can get quickly absorbed. Disadvantages are a suitable preservative is required to avoid microbial contamination contamination and it is costlier than tablets. So by now you all know that one of the disadvantages liquid is costlier than tablets. So if you cannot recall anything, you can write like this. Write any general advantage or disadvantage of that route of administration if you cannot recall any specific one. 
the instructions of emulsion are very specific and important that is shake the bottle well before use it is specifically for emulsion and suspension because both the liquids are uh, ones which cannot be mixed in each other so we have to shake well before use then take the prescribed amount of emulsion orally in upright posture either sitting or standing and then close the bottle properly after the use the specific instruction over here is shake the bottle well before use coming to the next mixture that is suspension so it is a liquid medicament containing insoluble solid substance emulsion was liquid plus liquid suspension is solid plus liquid so the insoluble solid substance which has which are homogeneously distributed throughout the vehicle with or without the help of a suspending agent here the insoluble solid substance can be diffusible or indiffusible diffusibles are those uh, on shaking they can be mixed and they remain evenly distributed and indiffusible are the ones which don't evenly distributed throughout the vehicle for that suspending agents are used and these are the substances which help the insoluble substances to stay in uniform distribution throughout the liquid medicament for a sufficient time after shaking the examples are albendazole and antacid this is the most commonly asked image in your practical examination you can be asked about specific instructions advantage or disadvantage image most of the students write about the drug given if i ask you to write advantages and disadvantages of the dosage form you are supposed to write about suspension based on this photo not about the advantages and disadvantages of albendazole even with common sense you can assume that in practical class suspension can be the question not albendazole another photo of suspension coming to advantages and disadvantages of suspension advantages are it is the insoluble substances can be administered in the liquid form and it ensures uniformity of dosage these are chemically more stable than syrup disadvantages are suitable preservative is required to avoid microbial contamination and these are costlier than tablets the most commonly asked question which is specific instructions of suspension again the same shake the bottle well before use as it is solid plus liquid combination the solid sediments uh, solid particles are sedimented below so you need to shake the bottle well before the use so the those are homogeneously mixed in the bottle then take the prescribed amount of suspension orally in upright posture with the sitting or standing and close the bottle properly after the use till now we have covered four dosage forms quickly write those four dosage forms covered in today today's practical names of four liquid dosage forms covered in today's practical syrup next is syrup elixir emulsion elixir suspension okay syrup and elixir are solutions suspension and emulsion are mixture and any of these dosage form given via dropper as drops is known as drops for oral use so the drops are liquid medicines for pediatric use 
dispensed dispensed in dropper bottle examples of drugs given via this route are multivitamin drops and paracetamol drops the advantages are accurate dose can be given <clears throat> how have you seen the uh, liquids to be taken by patients or by yourself how do you take a syrup or a solution if a solid uh, drug is to be taken we take the full drug or uh, take it in halves and take it with the water but how is the liquid taken what are the instructions to the patient ek chamchi be chamchi 5 ml how do we take syrup okay half the answer is already given by me it is taken either as teaspoon full tablespoon full but it is not accurate as you only yourself are confused between the exact conversion of what a tablespoon full is the conversion is fixed but the size of spoon differ house to house so that is not very accurate way of administering a liquid another one is your bottle comes with a cap which has the marking it is somewhat accurate or better than a spoon but the most accurate one would be this dropper there are better ways too you will have to find out the better ways or more accurate ways of giving liquid dosage forms one such accurate one is this dropper so the advantage is accurate dose can be given and it can be easily administered in infants and children one such disadvantage is it is costlier than other preparations the instructions would be prescribed number of drops to be given by dropper here is the photo or example of paracetamol oral solution via drops it is a solution only but given by dropper or drops another example of multivitamin syrup given via drops one such as colecalciferol oral drops and this photo shows the image of dropper with markings for accuracy what are these what do you see in this photos is my screen visible to you all am i audible okay yes so what can be seen in this photos something anything what comes to your mind on seeing this photo injection okay so it is syringe
there is no needle but syringe these are the syringes for oral use via dropper if we give the drug it comes as drops but via syringe we can prescribe the exact amount which we want to administer to the patient so one more way of giving a liquid dosage form is via syringes coming to other such dosage forms which are not mentioned in your manual just for your knowledge one such is linctus it is a viscous syrupy liquid that is viscous syrup and it is to be sipped without dilution examples are cough linctus one such is tincture that is alcoholic extracts of plant drugs examples are tincture belladonna or tincture digitalis okay so you have already been taught about the calculation part in your first practical itself quickly revising what can be the answer of this question as this is about a syrup we are discussing or revising in this practical also here the case is a 3 year old child with a weight of 15 kg so what you have to write for calculation is weight 15 kg the prescribed syrup is paracetamol 3 times a day again write the dose that is 10 mg per kg per dose the question here is what volume of syrup should be given per dose the strength again is given that is 125 mg per 5 ml three things you have to or you must write for a better calculation is weight 15 kg dose is 10 mg per kg per dose and third one is strength that is 125 mg per 5 ml first step of any calculation would be calculating the dose that is 10 mg per kg and here the weight is 15 kg so 15 into 10 would be 150 mg per dose we will have to give one 50 mg per dose here the syrup strength is 125 mg per 5 ml which means in 5 ml of paracetamol syrup 125 mg of drug will be given 125 mg in 5 ml so 150 mg how many ml will be administered 6 ml good so here the answer would be 6 ml 10 into 15 is equal to 150 if 150 mg per 5 ml in here we have calculated per ml dose that is 25 mg and then come to the final answer you can quickly skip one step and go directly to the answer that is 6 ml so it was about syrup the next case is about drops it says a neonate with weight of 3 kg has been prescribed paracetamol oral drops 3 times a day so weight is 3 kg strength of oral drops is 100 mg per ml second thing to be written is 100 mg per ml the question here is what volume should be given per dose remember whenever we ask about volume we need an answer in milliliters and you are you are also asked to calculate the number of drops per dose third thing to be written is dose of paracetamol which is 10 mg per kg per dose sorry for the for the slash between 10 and mg it is 10 mg per kg per dose so three things here are 3 kg weight so dose would be 3 into 10 that is 30 mg per dose in the strength of oral drops is 100 mg 
per ml which means per ml of paracetamol contains 100 mg of drug 100 mg in 1 ml so here 30 mg in what would be the volume 30 divided by 100 0.3 ml good 0.3 ml so the volume would be 0.3 you are also asked to calculate the number of drops per dose how will you calculate that <clears throat> is there any formula to calculate these drops how did you all reach to the conclusion of 6 to 7 drops yes 1 ml is 20 drops 1 ml equals to 20 drops so 0.3 ml is equal to 6 drops per dose always always read the question carefully and then come to the answer good so again now coming to exam questions what can be asked for, from this practical first one is the calculation related question of any oral syrup or oral drops can be asked second one is it can be asked in ospi2 that is tray viva in that you can be asked regarding communication how to communicate or how to give specific instructions of one dosage form to the patient let us take one example and you all will communicate to a patient regarding how to use suspension any one of you can unmute himself or herself and answer how to communicate to the patient regarding the use of suspension i suppose no one is ready to give the exam you can at least write in the chat box regarding the use of suspension communication part quickly this is the easier one easier than the calculation how to use a suspension there is a bottle given how to explain to the patient okay write in english write about the instructions okay shake the bottle well before use take the suspension in a upright posture okay specific one would be the shake well one and you can add these other instructions too if the examiner asks mu tamari patient chu an mane a bottle kevi rite use karvani che e samjhavo then you will be giving the answer in gujarati or hindi if not comfortable you can explain in english also regarding shaking the bottle taking the prescribed amount 5 ml kidu hoy to ketlu 5 ml thai ek chamchi kidu chhe be chamchi kidu chhe dropper apyu chhe you are taking with bottle cap how much amount and see if asked regarding shaking well taking in a upright posture closing the bottle properly and keeping it out of reach of children okay so one more question we have seen you can be asked about calculation you can be asked about communication 
you can be asked about compare and contrast of any two dosage forms in your spotting for instance you are asked to compare and contrast syrup and elixir in your spotting so in any of the compare and contrast question you will be writing two points regarding similarities of those two dosage forms and two points regarding differences of those two dosage forms you can easily make out what are the similarities of those dosage forms so do not miss out on writing about similarities at least so here we are taking the question that is syrup and elixir suppose in your exams you are asked compare and contrast syrup and elixir and write two points each first quickly write about the similarities in the chat box in today's practical we have learned about syrup and elixir both what are the similarities between these two okay good both are solution anything else flavored okay okay i'll quickly go through some points about similarities the similarities are both are liquids for oral use both are solutions having homogeneous material both can be flavored both may need flavoring coloring agent both are suitable for pediatric use you can write anything okay quickly coming to the differences you can write differences under these headings between syrup and elixir so what was the vehicle for syrup and what was for elixir can anyone recall okay for syrup it was concentrated aqueous solution and elixir are hydro alcoholic solutions coming to base syrup had sugary base and elixir had alcoholic base the taste here in syrup it would be sweet and elixir it may or may not be sweet and you can write different examples of syrup and elixir for differences like paracetamol vitamin cough syrups and in elixir bromhexane or promethazine so in this manner you can go for similarities and differences of any two dosage forms the differentiating points may be different for different dosage forms asked so here we end the practical and these are the assignments for you to write in your journal you can take a screenshot or write it you will be given your journal so when you come physically till then you can write in your rough or any fair book if you have prepared for pharmacology later on you can copy that in your pharmacology journals okay thank you you can ask if you have any doubts or else we shall close the meeting thank you